we talked about what happened in uh, Moscow, Idaho. Idaho uh, four college kids, students were murdered. Slaughtered. Slaughtered, slain. Uh, I just want to talk about more details that I do know. And uh, yeah, I, I don't feel I rushed. anything else about it, really. I don't feel rushed like to get an episode out. So I want to take a bit of slower pace and talk about it. Like uh, like we said last week, you know, four students were murdered while they were sleeping. Or not while they were sleeping, but overnight. Uh, they say the times could have been from 3 to 5 a.m. Mm. while they were uh, asleep. And uh, the first 911 call came, like we said, eight hours later. I kind of got some more clarification because I was kind of confused at when it happened. So uh, the students that were living downstairs... Uh-huh. They went to go check up on them or just walk in and they opened the sliding door, uh, I believe, on the second floor. And they noticed like there was blood everywhere. So while she was trying to call 911, she passed the fuck out. And then a neighbor seen that she was passed out on the patio. And then that was the 911 call. Like, hey, someone's passed out. Yeah. And then when the ambulance came to see the passed out student. That's when they seen like this like mess of blood like everywhere, blood and they were just like, "What the fuck just happened?" And uh, that wasn't even the initial phone call, bro. So, and they said that it could have messed with the uh, the crime scene because you have people walking around and, and looking for their friends, maybe, and trying. And maybe they were stepping on blood, and you know, yeah. make putting their footprints there, and and you know, just kind of uh, contaminating the crime scene. Yeah, and. It could be one of the reasons why they're taking so long because they haven't got their. They don't have a. As far as we know, they don't have their suspect. Yeah, but I, I truly point. no, bro. I truly believe they have their eye on somebody. And I'm gonna tell you, like, not necessarily why, but kind of why I think that. I guess why I think that. Yeah. Um. So that's what happened, and bro, there's been so many. The internet has took in this, bro. All over Reddit, TikTok, conspiracy theories, theories. Oh, I can't believe I haven't seen anything else about it since we talked about it. Well, it's because now that I've seen talked about it and viewed on TikTok, I see it a lot more now. So uh, yeah, <laughs> damn had a bird, and um, yeah, bro, they're saying that it could have been the uh, the ex boyfriend, because uh, so one of the girls, she had an ex boyfriend. They had just broke up, and what we was weird, bro. So people, you know, you go out and party. Or most college kids go out party, drink, you know, maybe get a little drunk or tipsy. Mm-hmm. Um, and she called her ex boyfriend. A com- combination of her and her best friend, they called the ex boyfriend seven times that night, seven or or eight or nine. It's one of those numbers. I forget. I don't know why. But either way, yeah, it's a lot of calls. But it's just like, and it was like around one a.m. As soon as they got home, after the food truck, you know how I showed you that? Yeah, with the yeah. So <clears throat> after that, they they said that uh, she called his her ex, and it's just like, was she drunk calling him, or was like? What she people are saying like maybe she was calling him because she was like hey I see you outside go away that was one of the theories one of those were one of the theories we don't a reach though it is a reach yeah but those are one of the theories another theory is like hey I, I think there's someone here but it's just like well why would you call him first instead of nine one one yeah me feel unsafe well but in in that um to that statement there's a lot of like just from personal experience mm-hmm. like. I I have have had exes or something that if they felt unsafe, they're gonna call somebody they trust first. Yeah, and they won't always. They'll trust you mm. to give them the right either their your protection or the right advice. Like, hey, you need to call nine one one. Yeah, but I feel like girls for the for yeah, they yeah. want to talk to somebody they trust to make like to reassure them that they're okay, okay, and or like, then, hey, can you come here? And then they'll call nine one one. And then they'll call nine one one. Yeah, but that statement, I I feel like the ex would have been. The first part, if he was her protector for a period of time, then she's going to yeah. go to him if she ever feels in trouble because she's used to going to him if she's mm-hmm. ever in trouble. So I don't think that that's like you should have called 911 first. I don't think that's because you yeah. also think if you're in a threatening situation, human mm-hmm. instinct is you never think anything bad's going to happen to you. Yeah. So it might be like you think you're, you're overthinking things. So you call mm-hmm. somebody that you're comfortable with. To tell you you're overthinking things or whatever, but yeah, and that's yeah. happened. I mean, in my relationship, where my girl calls me like, "Oh, I think this car is following me," or exactly you know, stuff like yeah, that. Exactly, yeah. but you don't want to call nine one one because you yeah. don't know if you're overreacting or overanalyzing the situation. Yeah. So, but at least as far as they haven't come out and said that 
uh, anyone from inside the apartment has called 911 personally or there hasn't been any like logs of that. Um, another thing that was interesting, bro, is that um, at 3 a.m., there was a uh, 911 call made and it was literally from here, bro, to like where your truck is, like walking distance. Like if you get out, you're outside and you walk to your truck. Mm-hmm. So like where we're at right now is like a field and where trucks at was where their uh, house was. And there was a 911 call, a disturbing call at, at 301. And it was just like an alcohol disturbance call. What happened? Just, you see all that? Like, it's just like, it's, it's just like tomato paste. Oh, no. And it, the texture just yeah. threw me off for a minute. But yeah, uh, there was that call, that disturbance call. <clears throat> and it's just like, kind of like, is that tied to, uh, to the, to, to like maybe the, the murderer or whatever. And also, too, I don't know if last week I said it on the show, but it's like a, like a military knife that was used is what they were saying. I didn't know that. Yeah. So they're saying like it could have been someone who hunts. It could have been like an but ex-military. They never, found, they never found the murder weapon, right? They still haven't found the yeah. murder weapon, which is another thing that was like, if you don't find that, it's so. Yeah, you're so. probably not going to solve the case. But people are saying that they're hoping that, you know, once they get the DNA results, they'll either have someone and they hope that they're in the system or they're going to have to wait till that person gets in trouble and then they'll run them through the system and then that's when they'll get caught and that could take years too. Yeah, that could be. You know, like a, that's when, like, if you get pulled over for a ticket and they're like, oh shit, this is so and so, like, you're again. Yeah, yeah. Like they, yeah. I, I don't think, if they, especially if they haven't found anybody now that they have arrested, yeah. Because, like, suspicion to murder, I don't think they're going to catch the person, honestly, unless they convince. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Confess, uh-huh. unless they confess, but I don't, I don't see them catching the murderer. Yeah, murderer kinda, or murderers. Yeah, uh, it's I think of, it was one of the roommates, but well, there were two girls, and then like, like literally this week they said that there yeah. was another person on the lease, and that that the lease, the lease, lease, lease. Sorry, on the lease, and it was so it was six people in total living in the, in that house, and they said that well, and they were like, why did people were upset how. Why wasn't that said earlier when it, the first crime scene, like the crime happened? Why do they, why do they announce this three weeks later? You know, it's like they're trying to find reasons why that matters in the, in the investigation. Yeah. Um, another thing is that uh, this week as well, they had the, I think it's called the vigil or vigil. Vigil. Yeah. Where, so the dad was saying that the, the two girls, um, they died together on the same bed. And that wasn't, like, stated at all. So now, like, everyone's like, okay, like, they were sleeping together. Oh, I think I did. We Mm-mm. did talk. No, we didn't talk about that. Mm-mm. No, I think that was me and my girlfriend. But anyways, like they a were. a lesbian f- thing? No, 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 no. Like, they were just found. So like, Together. Yeah, so, like, the the murderer walked in and, and killed them both, I guess, at the same time or whatever. Yeah, and that's kind of sad because you'd think if the target was just one person. Mm-hmm. Now if they person. wouldn't if they wouldn't have been asleep together, only yeah. one person might have died. But since he killed two, he had to kill four. Or okay. you know, I, I don't yeah. know. And then uh, another thing that's kind of sad too, bro, is like <coughs> so the the girl that they think was a target. So she was actually like she actually moved out and she was there visiting and just oh. and packing stuff to go. And she had got a new car like that week, mm-hmm. and like. Uh, that's why people say that, okay, that's why she was sleeping with her roommate because she didn't have her bed there. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, you know, and it's kind of sad, bro. Like, she was moving out, and I think they I said that, yeah. that she had a job lined up and, and everything, bro. And it's just like, damn, that's fucking crazy. That's crazy, bro. I do feel bad for uh, women in that aspect because they're so targeted, and sometimes I know, they don't even bro, know it, bro. It sucks. Like, they just get, like, if you go out to a bar, mm-hmm. like, I wouldn't feel comfortable going out to a bar if I was a female because... Alone or, or just with your girls? It, well, yeah, with it, like re, even with your boyfriend, bro. Like yeah. if y'all if y'all are not married or anything, y'all might not go home together. Like somebody, I feel like there's always somebody in a bar that is waiting or watching any female at any given time to mm-hmm. see, you know, to watch them slip up or I don't know. It's just, yeah, I feel like it would be hard to be a female in this day and age in dudes a bar are just scene. Creeps, bro. Too yeah. many creeps, I think. Because dudes, too many. Like, in there age, might be I, people that. Like, guys, we have to worry about maybe getting in a fight or getting jumped or something like that. But we don't have to worry but about, most, like... most men, like, if they get in a fight, it's probably because they're defending a girl. Yeah. Like, especially if you're going out. Yeah, but there's not... Like, if I saw you at a bar, I wouldn't just look at you and think, like, 
Like Jeffrey Damn, Dahmer? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's not, but Jeffrey Dahmer to men is like what men are to women. But Yeah. But so men, men have it easy when it comes to that. I feel bad for women in that aspect yeah. because they have to worry 24-7. That's why I think all women should carry that thing on them or yeah. some pepper or spray some pepper or spray. something yeah. defensive because you never know. You never know, especially if you're drunk and you're weak. You're already typically weaker than a man as it is. But if you're drunk, you're even weaker. And if there's a man watching you, mm-hmm. he's probably been making sure you're getting drunk and he's probably sober yeah and he's trying to t- yeah so I, it's, just, it's it's upsetting it's there, yeah. i have a daughter when she gets yeah. older bro it's like it's just terrifying disturbing upsetting let's do the, the quick cut uh and yeah and another thing is that also this week i believe that i think it was like the fbi or or somebody in uh what is it called in the i guess trying to figure this out they were in one of the rooms and they were looking out the window, like they're. Wow. That's and people are saying like, uh, people are assuming that the cops are trying to figure out like if you can see, you know, like looking out through this window just to see what the the visual is, you know, like you know what can we see? What can you see from here? So people and like people like myself are assuming like okay maybe this person was waiting, like he knew who they were. I definitely think he knew who they were. <laughs> He's been in the house before. Uh, he was. He probably knew they were out that night, and he was probably waiting for the lights to turn off. And he was just like, you know, just just out waiting to. Yeah, because uh, these crimes also aren't like typically like crimes like this aren't normally random. They probably yeah, they're this somewhat was probably planned. Studying your habits, like your habits, your routine, uh, like everything. It might have been a friend that you've had over that was kind of seeing like yeah. Where the sleeping arrangements were for everybody. I, I don't know. It just could be. I think it was definitely somebody close to them. Probably, I agree. That has been to their house. Probably see, partied. Seen, yeah. Seen the sleeping arrangements. Uh, maybe studied them for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but. I don't know. I think it's. Uh, I don't know. It's just sad, bro. It's just sad. It's college kids, especially like. I mean, any murderer is sad, but. Yeah. People that have no plans of dying. I really, I really want them to come out and say where the bodies were found, bro. Like, I'm curious if everybody was found in the bed asleep or if people. Um, I think they were all asleep. I would think. What it's just like, I know there were two separate floors, and it's just like, well, you know, if those two girls were sleeping together. One of them had to wake up. Yeah, I was gonna say. So if they were sleeping together, one get, starts getting stabbed. You can't kill both of them at the same time. So yes. one of them is obviously screaming. So maybe the other two run and in d- kind and of a defensive situation, up. see what's up. And then it's like the killer's like, oh, shit, I came here to kill one. Then it turned into two. And now I got now it's kill. four. Yeah. So I don't know. That's but a good I think point, it's, though. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting now because it's just like if there was two people in one bed, obviously it was somewhat of a, a fight. It had to be. Um, because it, I, I find it really difficult just to like, you know, you're killing someone and the other person doesn't hear or, or doesn't feel the movement. Um, and then it makes me think like, okay, maybe the other people that were either downstairs or upstairs, whichever one he did, whichever, whoever he killed first, um, maybe heard it. And then, uh, and then with that, what I'm concluding to, or what I'm trying to get at is that there had to be a fight. And if there was a fight, there had to be uh either like he hurt himself or yeah or something where like there has to be DNA defensive wounds like yeah, yeah, skin yeah. under the nails. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, let us know what you think on the comments below. See you on the next one.